other thing that's changed is what happens when you put in a cross dissolve. So I want to put in a cross dissolve there. I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut, Control D, and in goes my cross dissolve. So far, so exactly the same as before. However, you'll notice that if I actually say select a clip and have a cursor down there and I do Control D, cross dissolve's actually gone up here on this clip. It's gone at the end of the clip. If I actually put that clip on its own and select it, Control D will put a cross dissolve on both ends of the clip. That's going to be great for titles because you'll automatically get a fade on it, you know, just make up a new title. Take the title, shove it onto the timeline, drag it out as long as you want, select it, Control D, instant cross dissolve at the start and the end. Nice and fast. It's going to be slightly more irritating if you're actually used to. You stick your cursor there at the join, you're trying to do a cross dissolve and it's not working. Why is it not working? Because they're now prioritizing clip selection over track selection. So you think, okay, well, in that case, I'm going to need to select two clips and then use the keyboard shortcut to put the cross dissolve on. That would make sense. Control D to do the cross dissolve. Yep, I've now got a cross dissolve between those two. But hang on, I've also got a cross dissolve at the start of this one. This one's the very start of the timeline. Let's put a cross dissolve on. Undo that. So how do I get a cross dissolve on that join by using the keyboard shortcut? The best way is basically click on the exact join, then Control D. If you click on the join, you get the cross dissolve there. If you select some clips, you get cross dissolves wherever it can stick them. So start of that one in between those two. Can't do that because it would go onto the other one. If you don't have anything selected, then it's based on the track, as before. It's taken me a bit of time to get used to that and I've sometimes had cross dissolves popping up in different places. But I can see the logic as soon as I get the hang of it, then I'll be able to actually whack cross dissolves on particularly things like titles quite a lot faster. Here's another nice change which is actually quite useful. I'm going to start trimming off this clip. I'm going to go into ripple mode, so I'm going to get rid of the clip and I'm trimming and making it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and whack, let go. I trimmed the entire clip out. Go right down there, there is no extra frame in there. If I was doing that in the old versions of Premiere, you'd always leave one frame behind of whatever you were trimming off. Now I can trim out every single bit of the clip if I want to. Other nice little things. Let's just shove a clip up in the source window here. They redesigned the source and the program windows in CS6, so you can customize all this, you can add things on, customize the buttons. All that's exactly the same as before. What's nice is that I can just click on this little button here and it will show me the audio waveform. Go click on that, it goes back to the picture. It was a thing you can get to from the spanner and you can say audio waveform. Now you can click and see the waveform separately. This was actually in CS6 and some of the earlier versions. If I want to take this clip and put it onto the timeline, normally the sound and video would come in together. If I was just to grab that icon and drop it, you'll notice that's just brought in the video. Grab that icon and drop it, it's just brought in the sound. Those two draggy things we could do before, this one to click in between showing the waveform or not, we couldn't do before. Small one to mention why I've got a timeline open with the audio showing there. Let's just solo that track and play it. And you'll notice the sounds all over one side and not over the other. This was a small thing introduced in CS6, but you may not be aware of. If you right click on the audio and go to audio channels, I've got two channels here left and right. It's saying on both of those play the left and the right. Well I can use this dialog box to say yes yeah, stick the left out on both of them. That sorts out my audio and puts the same out on both tracks. I can also select lots of clips and do that with all of them at once. Now I'm just going to add some effects to me there. Let's just take a three-way color corrector and put that on and make a slight change on that. Let's just shove me up in the corner. And we'll add on another thing, this is a lighting effect. So I've got several effects on that clip. Some of them souped up by the Mercury playback engine, so they'll play in real time like the color correction and the motion path. Some of them like this spotlight, not. I'd like to apply that to a whole bunch of other clips. Now what I can do is to select all those effects and then make a preset out of them, which I can then apply to other clips, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to use the Paste Attributes dialog. It's been in Premiere ever since I started. Right click, copy the clip, select the clips you want the, to copy the effects onto, right click, Paste Attributes. But in all previous versions of Premiere, it would paste everything. You wouldn't have an option. 
in this one up it pops and you can see here you can say well I don't want to paste the lighting effect I don't want to put on the the channel volume stuff yep do want the motion don't want the opacity click now all these other clips have got the same color correction and motion path on them but they don't have the spotlight and just a nice little change use paste attributes a lot it's nice to be able to select the bits you actually want to paste Thank you.